Hello everybody, it's Mrs Holmes here and this is lesson 9 in a series on equivalent fractions. So let's get started. I'm very excited as fractions is one of my favourite topics in maths. I will confess though, when I was younger I didn't like it very much so I found it a bit confusing. I really hope that these lessons will help you to understand it better. Okay, so I know last lesson Mrs Parry left you with a task. But before we go on to that, I just want to make sure that you're really, really solid and clear on a couple of things. So just bear with me. OK. Now, I know five take away five equals zero is a really easy calculation for you to do. And it's not really about that that I'm drawing the attention. OK. It's more to help you understand how we know that fractions are equivalent. So bear with me as we go through this. So as you can see, there is a fraction calculation there. So if we have one fifth, one part out of the five, and we take that part away, the difference is zero. We've taken the same amount away, haven't we? And the same on the final um, equation at the bottom there, 1,274. If you take away the 1,274, we have zero. OK, you're with me so far? Brilliant. So this is the um, stem sentence that was introduced to you last time by Mrs Parry. The difference is zero, then the minuend and the subtrahend have the same value. Have you remembered which is which? OK, I'll just recap. So in any calculation where you is a subtraction, the first number is the minuend and the second number is the subtrahend okay so you can see that this um, stem sentence matches up with what we've just talked about five take away five equals zero so five being the minuend take away five the subtrahend gives a value of zero because there's no difference between the values of those two um, numbers Right, OK, let's have a look at this one here, moving on to our fractions. What do you notice about this equation? Yeah, you might have spotted that the result is zero. That's brilliant. So what does that actually mean based on what we've just talked about? What was that? Yeah, you're absolutely right. That they must be worth the same value. So that means that they must be equivalent fractions okay now to check that that's what we're going to look at this lesson really trying to understand the relationships and making sure that we know how we can see whether or not fractions are equivalent so looking at this one here what would you use then to help you do you think if you did the homework you might have a clue you can see a relationship now I can see one as well. What, what relationship can you see? Yeah, I was looking at the 28 and the 14 as well. So 28 divided by, yep, yeah, 2, well done, is 14. OK, so what does that mean we need to do to our numerator then? Yep, yeah, you've guessed it, well done. You also need to divide by 2, don't you? So then we end up with 11 fourteenths. So that's looking at our horizontal relationship there because we compared the two denominators to help us to work out the relationship. In this case, that was probably easier to do um, because it's harder to look at how many times, um, say 22 and 28, looking at that relationship, the vertical one. It's a little bit more tricky. OK. So this was the task, wasn't it, that Mrs Parry left you with. So when we look at these in a second, we are going to start with the middle one, but that doesn't really matter if you've got them written down in a different order. Now, most of you, hopefully, have already had a go at this task, but if you haven't, that's OK. Pause the video now and then have a go and see if you can work out what you think the answers are. Remember what we've just looked at, because it's really important to help you understand. And when you're ready, come back to me. 
You're back already? Wow, you're super speedy. Okay, so as I said, we're going to look at the middle one first. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so this is our first one to look at. What six twelfths take away something over six gives zero. Did you notice that zero? So what does that tell us? Hmm. Do you remember what we said? Yes, you're right. It means that the missing fraction is equivalent, the same size as the first fraction that we've already got, the six twelfths. So what we're going to do is think about how we can work out that missing value. Now, there are two ways to look at um, missing values in fractions. There's the horizontal relationship. And I tend to think of a, a sailor looking um, on the horizon to help me remember that. And there's also the vertical relationship. And for that, I tend to think about Roman and Greek buildings with the columns. That's what helps me remember. And this one, we're going to look at the horizontal relationship. So that's this part here. Now, the two values we have are the denominators. We have um, the twelfths and the sixths. So we need to work out that relationship. And once we do, we can then find the missing value. That's what I mean by fractions. If you understand how it works, it's so much easier. So can you see a relationship? Well done, you. Absolutely, it's divided by two, isn't it? Twelve divided by two equals six. So what does that mean for our missing value? Well remembered, yes. Whatever we do to the denominators, we must also do the same thing to the numerators to keep the values proportionate, mustn't we? So we must also divide that by two. And that gives us, yes, well done, three sixths. So six twelves and three sixths are equivalent. So when we take one away from the other, we are left with zero because they are of the same size. Ah, what do we notice about this one? Has anything changed? Yes, the zero is in a different position, isn't it? Does that make any difference, though? No, it doesn't, does it? The orientation of our equation doesn't make a difference. We can see that we still have a difference of zero. So what does that tell us? Fantastic, yes, you're right. These fractions are equivalent again. But instead of looking at the horizontal relationship as we did last time, we're going to look at the vertical relationship this time. So there you go. What we can see is that the denominator is five times the value of the numerator. So how could that help us to find our missing value? Fantastic, you're right, yes. If we multiply the numerator of four by five, we would get, I'm getting you to do some work as well, 20, brilliant. So four twentieths take away one fifth equals zero. Now, this is our last one of these. This time we have both our values, don't we? So we, all we need to do now is just calculate it, don't we? Hang on a minute. Just stop right there. I want you to have a look at the two equations and see if we notice something about them. Two fourteenths and one seventh. So we can look at the vertical relationship here and the horizontal one if we wanted, couldn't we? So if we were looking at the vertical relationship, let's check one seventh. So the numerator and the denominator, the relationship there is that the denominator is seven times the value of the numerator. So let's check on two fourteenths. Is that the same? Two times by seven equals 14. That works. Okay, now let's look across. Um, on the horizontal relationship. So we could go either way round, couldn't we? 
let's start with the 214, so that's first in our um, equation at the moment. So we need to divide that by 2, and we get 1. 2 divided by 2 equals 1. And for the um, denominator, 14 divided by 2 equals 7. Yeah, so both of those work. So what must the um, product be? Just checking. Zero. Brilliant. Of course it must be zero because they're equivalent again, aren't they? Well done, you. Right. OK, so this is a slightly different task. But pay close attention to this, though, because the task at the end might be a little bit similar. So what I want you to do is to pause the video um, and now we have a go at working out the equivalent fractions. So this means that you will use the four cards I've got there and arrange them into two fractions. So two six equals, and then you have one fraction, and then you have another equal sign and then another fraction. Okay, so you need to work that out using what we have been doing so far. And then we will look at the solutions and discuss after. So pause the video and off you go. You're back already, wow. You're super speedy at this. So let's have a look. I had a go as well, and I need you to just check that I've got this right. So here's my solution. Do you agree? No. Oh dear, have I made a mistake? Well, let's see if you can help me to work out where I went wrong. Okay, so the first thing I notice is our original fraction of two sixths there. So the denominator is three times the value of the numerator, isn't it? That's looking at the vertical relationship. So let's see. So, oh dear doesn't seem to work with either of them, does it? Because 1 8, 1 times 3, no, that would give me 3, so that's wrong. Oh dear. Uh, 3 times 3 is 9, so that's not 24 either. Oh dear, whoops. Yeah, I got that wrong. Shh, your turn, let's see if you can help me work it out. What was that? OK, I think I heard you. Is this what you said? All right, well, we just need to check, though, don't we? So 2, 6 is our original one. And we worked out that the relationship is that the denominator is three times the value of the numerator. So on the second fraction, 1 times 3 is 3, so that one works. And 8 times 3 is 24. Yeah, I think you've worked it out just as well I had you here to help me. Well done. Just to um, reinforce what we just looked at there, let's compare it in a different type of diagram. So there's our two six again. How can you see the six? Yes, the six is the top line, isn't it? And two of those six parts are coloured yellow. The bottom part is divided into 24. I promise you, you can check though if you want. And the um, ones that are shaded yellow, there's eight of those. And you can see that they are of equal size. Ah, now this is a special challenge for you. You've been getting so good at these equivalent fractions. This is one of those many possibility type challenges. I want you to take this one away. So you might need to copy it down now. And I want you to see if you could challenge a family member or maybe your teacher and then share with them your um, solutions. You can show them how fantastic you are at fractions. There are lots of possibilities. So you need to think about what you already know about parts of a whole 
and then decide on how many solutions you think there may be. So if you look at the denominator, think at how many parts there would be. And then there are other ways you could look at it as well, but I'll leave that with you. Maybe you could share some online solutions with us. That would be fantastic. And this is the activity I'm going to leave you with, the practice activity for lesson nine. So don't use the one that's on the board because that's obviously the example we had earlier. But this time I want you, as I say in the speech bubble there, to use this as an example to help you to make up your own. So I want you to think of a fraction. It could be one we've covered in the last few lessons, such as two fifths, um, three fifths, that kind of thing. Um, could be eighths, you could have six eighths or seven tenths. It's entirely up to you. But then you have to work out two equivalent fractions and make up some cards for whoever you're going to play it with to test them. So again, it might be a mum or dad or brother or sister. Can they work out how to reorganise your cards to find the equivalent fractions to your original fraction that you give them? I'm sure you'll be fantastic at it. OK, so I'll leave that one with you. But thank you very much. And it's time for me to go now. So 